Hello guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while since we posted something on this channel, and for that we blame the video course that we've been working on literally for years. When we set out to record the course, we had no idea it would grow into a 20 plus hour monster, and it took us some time to make sure we're happy with the quality of the content. But now, it's finally complete. Now, what's so special about this course? You want to learn how to make games, but you don't know how to get started. You do a research, and you end up choosing Unity as your game engine. But how do you proceed from there? You probably find some free video tutorials on YouTube, but eventually you start considering paying for a full course. And now the problem at hand is choosing the right one. So why should you choose ours? After a standard four-year college degree in computer science, I went into software development, where I had to learn various programming languages and technologies, largely by myself. Eventually, I ended up in education and immediately the joke that those who can't do teach lost all of its meaning, as I quickly realized that just because I know something doesn't mean I can teach it. Just because something makes perfect sense to me doesn't have to make perfect sense to my students. So after years of adjusting my teaching style and curriculum, together with a friend, an avid gamer, we decided to put together this course in a way that will help you learn how to make your own games. And here's the first feature of this course. Even though we're going to be making an 8-ball pool game, the ultimate goal of this course is not to show you how to make an 8-ball pool game per se. The ultimate goal is to use it to help you learn the basic principles of game making in Unity that will enable you to create your own games. One of the prominent features of our game is a real-life physics simulation. In other words, in the game that we'll be making in this course, the player will be able to make jump shots that make the ball bounce off the table, and swerve shots that make the ball move in a curve. So even though the game of pool might seem rather simple, while making this game, you will learn how to make physics-based 3D games in general. Another distinct feature of our game is a reasonably challenging AI player. What's important about the AI part is that while working on it, you will learn how to code complex data-driven game logic, which is a pretty valuable experience. Next, in this course, we will not only show you how to just make a game in Unity, but we will show you how to make a publishable mobile game. The 8-Ball Pool game that we will use as an example in this course has been published in both Apple's App Store and Google's Play Market, and we'll be making this game with an ultimate publishing goal in mind so that you can get the full experience. If you're interested, you can download the game from the stores to check it out. The links are in the resources to this video. And finally, since we aim to show you how to make a publishable game, we will also show you how to incorporate basic monetization by integrating ads into our project. Alright, again. In this course, we're using 8-Ball Pool as a learning example to teach you transferable skills that you can apply to any other game that you might want to make. In order to achieve that, we provide what I like to think of as exhaustive explanation, while in reality, for some of you, it might be exhausting explanation. Therefore, the first chapters of this course have two versions of the same lesson, one with detailed explanation and one with very little explanation. We call them the fast track and the learning track lessons. So if you already have some experience with Unity, you might want to go for the fast track lessons and switch to the learning track when you feel like you need some extra explanation. Now, the reason why we do not provide a fast track version for every single lesson is because at some point, the amount of explanation that in our opinion is skippable will decrease. Another feature of this course is based on the idea that learning is never a straight path, meaning quite often when we bump into something new, we cannot fully comprehend it as it requires additional knowledge and practice to become fully palatable. So, throughout the entire course, we'll be guiding you back to the previous lessons and we encourage you to actually do so. To help you navigate through the course, we have a glossary that contains descriptions of important concepts that you need to know to feel more comfortable with Unity. The glossary also contains a list of references where the concepts are being explained and applied. The link to the glossary page is attached to every learning track lesson of this course, and if you see a pop-up that looks like this one in the bottom left corner of the screen, it means that you can find more information in the glossary. But even if you don't see the pop-up, but you do feel like you're getting lost, consider referring to the glossary anyway, since the amount of explanation that we provide will be decreasing as we move through the course. In addition to glossary, in some lessons, we also provide links to our YouTube videos that can give you additional information related to the lesson. So if you see a pop-up like this one, check the lesson resources for the link. Now, this course is designed for people with no experience with Unity. Zero. However, if you're new to programming in general, and if you're not familiar with object-oriented programming, we recommend that you check out our YouTube channel first. 
If you do have some programming experience but are not familiar with C Sharp that is used in Unity as the scripting language, you might want to start from our video on the differences between the standard C Sharp and the C Sharp used in Unity. The main reason why we're not covering programming in general in this course is simply because Unity is not a good choice for that. However, this does not mean that this course is not a good fit if you're completely new to programming. Just go over the videos that we have on your YouTube channel and you will be fine. Now, one of the pitfalls of learning through a video course is that sometimes we end up simply following the instructions from the video, without much of comprehension as to why we should do what the person in the video is telling us to do. To address this problem, throughout the course I will be asking you to answer questions or think of solutions to problems. When that happens, the video will get darker and you will see a question mark or a pause icon. And I seriously encourage you to pause the video and try to answer the question or think of a solution. This should help you see whether you truly understand what's going on in the lesson or not. Another feature of this course is the prototyping approach. Even though we made and published the game before we started working on this course, we decided to show you a somewhat more natural process of game development, where we start simple with primitive graphics and simple functionality and expand our project throughout the course. For example, instead of spending a lot of time perfecting the game controls or the UI, we first create a more primitive version and then polish them in smaller increments. And as we do that, we show you how to fix common bugs and address larger issues that arise when you expand your project. We believe this approach is more beneficial for learning as the experiences you get in the process will enable you to address similar issues in other projects that you might be interested to be involved in in the future. All right, I hope this long intro made sense to you, and if you'd like to check out the course, you can find it on Udemy. The link is in the video description. You might also want to join our social media for further updates, including promo codes for the course. And this is it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye.